I turned 60 earlier this year, an age that brings deficits. Of course, creaking means a temporary inability to remember familiar people's names, a second colonoscopy, but there are benefits to reaching this age too. One is wisdom, or so they tell me. Another is the senior citizen discount at Dunkin' Donuts. Once you survive the shock of being asked if you're eligible, or more shockingly, the cashier's assumption that you're eligible without asking. Geezerdom's got a third perk, too. Let's call it a bemused appreciation for how ironic life can be. Take, for instance, adult diapers. From pampers we came to depends we shall return. Ironic, no? It's the same with tears. We'd cry easily when we're kids, not so much as grown-ups. Then at about the time AARP magazines start showing up uninvited in the mailbox, the lacrimal glands come alive again. Mine do, anyway. I can tear up at the sappy commercial sentimental newspaper article, Facebook posts, and some family decisions to have their dogs put down. And when the TV news shows one of those surprise reunions between a soldier returning from the war and his kids, or her kids, man, I lose it. <laughs> All right, excuse my manners. I'm Felix Funicello. If you're wondering why my surname sounds familiar, it's probably because my family has a famous cousin. I met Funicello, the Mickey Mouse Club, Beach Blanket Bingo. No? Well, never mind. But mark my words. Someday, when you're my age, you'll mention Miley or Bieber, and some future youth will look at you blankly and say, huh, who? Take it from me. The accelerating passage of time will astound you. So where was I? Oh yes, tears. I was on a plane while a back a while back, flying out to California for a film conference, and one of the flight movies was the Disney Pixar movie Up. So I started watching it, studying it, you know, because I'm a film professor and the author of three scholarly books on film history, and these Pix Disney Pixar flicks are considered by some to be the most entertainment art. What did I care? with the teenage boy sitting next to me with the earplugs and the faux hawk and the skateboarding magazine in his lap, thought about some old dude watching cartoon. What's it telling, right? But then when the film does the merry life sequence between the old guy, Carl, and his wife, Ellie, shows them that the time they meet as kids, so when they wed, loses their baby, grow up in the middle age, and then in old age, she dies, I began blubbering over a cartoon movie for crying out loud, and in my peripheral vision, I could see the faux hawk and kids staring at me. I felt like saying to him, wait until you're my age, you little doofus. We'll see how dry eyed you are when you watch a sequence like this. Or De Sica's The Bicycle Thief, or Schlesser Heater's Midnight Cowboy, or Jim Sheridan's In the Name of the Father, instead of Iron Man 12 or X-Men 27, or whatever the hell last summer's pubescent blockbuster was. Maybe by then you'll have picked up the little cinematic discernment. And by the way, your mouth breathing is annoying and your haircut looks like kind of stupid. But when I look over him, I see that he's not watching me watch the film. He's watching the film. And then he taps me on the arm and says, this movie rocks. That part they just showed the first time I saw it, I was like crying. By the time you're 60, you'll have, of course, encountered the reality of life that can be unfair of even tragic. Bad things can happen to good people, and bad people sometimes do thrive and go away with terrible transgressions for which they should be punished cosmically or legally. But life can be also be amusing, hilarious even, beautiful and sublime. All you have to do is realize that take out those tattered family photos or pop into the VH tape from 1983 or thread the old film projector, the vintage optomechanical bell and howl from the early 60s, say, and watch those home movies your dad took back when you and your siblings were kids and he was still in his 30s and aimed, shot, and captured for prosperity who you all were back then. That's what movies are, right? Thousands of still pictures taken months or years or decades before. Streams of images burned into celluloid that are reeled in from a lamp and projected onto a screen, allowing us the illusion that they're alive, flickers of light and dark, brightness and shadows that won't stand still like life itself.